Welcome back to What RT Nibs for General Disturbance. This is the S51, the Tier 7 Soviet SPG, and it's located on the south spawn of Mines under the command of Jocko2014. Okay, battle started. Well, Jocko's using the B4 howitzer, 203mm capable of 1050 alpha if it can penetrate 52 millimeters of armor and like most players he's decided on the south spawn to go into the bushes and to shoot towards the enemy going into the castle grounds now he's got a rather long reload on this gun 43.87 seconds but there's a very good reason for that very long time it's a very big arty and it's based on the hull of the kv1s Okay, he's loaded, and we've got a couple of enemy tanks turning up, a T-10 and an IS-2. Rounds out. Oh, it overshot both of them. If it had actually hit them, it probably would have done severe damage to both of those tanks. Now, he's decided to relocate temporarily next to this rock, and it prevents counter-battery. He can always reverse back out when he's ready to shoot. It's a very good tactic. You hug the rock, and then wait until you're ready. When he's got 18 seconds to go, so he's now just pulling back enough so he can dial in on the target. It's going to take him about 6 to 7 seconds to dial in, and then he'll be fully dialed in, ready to go. Well, he's decided to switch targets, and he's looking and tracking this TVP. He just got a bit of a rescue bloom following him. He's ready. Direct hit! 397 hit points there. And he's pulling back to avoid the counter battery strike the enemy RT in this game is a GW Panther it's also tier 7 and we don't know where he is but um, he's more than likely might consider counter battery if he hasn't got enough targets to hit already now another 15 seconds and he'll be ready he's still tracking that TVP VTU and to the north, we've got a red line on that. To the north, we've got another bunch of tanks coming around the east route. Okay, we're dialing in on the FV4202. Okay, he's on the aim point. Rounds out. Direct hit! 477 hit points. That was an excellent shot. Now, he's going to have to change position. And it would be best if he moves slightly to the west. Just enough so that he can actually shoot those enemy tanks as they come down the east side of the map. And they will start coming down the east side very shortly. We do have some defenders in tank destroyers. There's a Striv S1 and a T30, I think, actually guarding that area. But we do have enough targets to shoot at. Now, almost loaded. One of the bad things about the S51 is it doesn't ha carry a lot of shells, actually. Very few. Rounds out on the FV4202. And he kills him this time. Direct hit. Wiped him out. And he's changing position to avoid counter battery. But the GW Panther doesn't appear to have actually been interested in any counter battery. And so long as Jocko doesn't actually give away his position, he should be okay. Okay, we've got a Wizzy 111G FT. Or is it just a 111G FT? No, he's decided to go for that King Tiger captured. Dialing in. Now, you might notice on one of the mods I use is an aim timer. It's slightly to the right of the reticule, and that actually helps tell an arty player exactly when he's ready to shoot in terms of being fully dialed in on aim. It's very handy. Now, he's trying to select the right target. He's going to go for the King Tiger captured. Direct hit for 282 this time. And the enemy just lost the Scorpion G as well. And he's changed position to avoid counter battery. Backing up into the bushes. He's doing very well so far. 1,730 hit points, I believe. Going after an AMX AC-46. 
but changed his mind because there's a couple of tanks that are actually close to the cliff edge. A T-10. He's dialing in. Almost ready. He's ready. Direct hit. 369 and the T-10 was killed immediately afterwards by our T-29. Now we weren't spotted or anything, but we're just moving forward temporarily. With two tanks down on the enemy at the moment, but there's every chance that we can change this. Well, they've lost that AC-46. They've got a 45 TP over on the island. We're trying to select the right target to actually do the most damage. But we are losing targets which are losing sight of targets. Okay, we're loaded, but we're looking for the right target to hit. Now, that TVP VTU needs to back up a bit more. And we're going to have to thread the shell through that gap, through the dead tank and the wall of that tower to hit the target. So it's a very risky t shot. We can't hit the King Tiger captured at the moment. The Skoda's too close to the wall. Oh, no, he's popped out. He's popped out, and so is the 45 TP. And we can possibly get that 45 TP with a splash kill. Rounds out. Yes, got him. And that removes another gun from the game. Sends that uh, player back to the garage. And he's avoiding the counter battery by hugging the wall again. He's a very good player when it comes to counter battery because uh, Jocko certainly knows that if you don't relocate in this very confined area, it could have very bad consequences. Okay, he's relocated. And the GW Panther has been spotted up near the enemy cap. And this will be an opportunity for us to take him out of the game. And once he's out of the game, that will enable us to, um, to shoot without fear of being damaged. Well, he's given up any chance of getting the GW for the moment because he lost sight of him. If he does pop into view whilst we're loaded, obviously it would be a very good idea to get him straight away. But uh, we've lost sight of that TVP VTU as well. Okay, we've spotted the King Tiger captured near the centre rocks, but unfortunately we've got a red line, and that's from the tower that's directly in front of the King Tiger captured. About the only shot we can take at the moment is the Wizzy 111 GFT who's actually hiding behind a house, and we could splash him. Now, he's only got five rounds of ammunition left, so he's got to pick the right target to hit. Well, there's the Skoda T-50. Oh, just took out our STA-1, but he's backing away into that corner. Rounds out. Might splash him. It does for 184. But he's only got four rounds left now. There's only five left on our team. And unfortunately, there is seven on the enemy's team. So it is now looking a little dicey, to say the least. And he just knocked over a couple of pots. But I'm not sure the GW Panther will notice that. There's that uh, Wizzy. Now, is he going to make a move? We're loaded. Dialing in. Rounds out. A direct hit for 431. That was a good shot. He's hugging the house. No response from the GW. Now, only three rounds left now. It certainly looks as if uh, Jocko 2014 has actually managed to complete some missions because uh, they've t they've come up with ticks on the um, visual aids on the mods. In fact, they're not mods anymore, are they? Those <laughs> they are actually part of the the standard client. Okay, still can't get that King Tiger. The, that uh, tower is in the way. And we can't really hit that Wizzy, but we certainly can take out that TVP VTU if he backs up at all. 
It's a very narrow shot, so he needs to be fully dialed in before he shoots. Well, we just killed the Wizzy. The T-30 got him. There he is. Rounds out. Oh, it hit the wreck, but it did do some damage to the TVP and stunned him. And the enemy's just lost another player, the IS-2. Only two rounds left now. And we just saw an RT round arcing through the air in this direction. So it looks like the... GW Panther is looking this way, but I suspect that he's actually aiming at our teammates, not at us. So it kind of indicates that he's over in this direction and he may be hiding in that corner. Because you can follow the line of the shell all the way back to this spot. We only saw it briefly, but this is the, the path that that shell took. GW Panther's got a much shorter reload because it's a 15 centimeter howitzer, not a 203 millimeter howitzer. So if he fires in the next few seconds, we might see the tracer, and that would indicate precisely where he is. And then we can counter battery him. The footprint of the B4 howitzer is very big. So if he does shoot, he could be wiped out by the return shot. Waiting for him to shoot. One of the things you have as an RT player is a lot of patience and very good eyes. You can stare at the screen for a very long time to get exactly what you want to see. The enemy just lost their... Uh, well, actually, we just lost our striv... Or did we? No, we... Our oh, Striv 1, S1, just killed their GW. So he actually moved and he came down towards us. And that's surprising. I say it's surprising because, if anything, the GW Panther should have changed to a position which would enable him to get shots on our tanks. And that would have meant moving over to the northeast corner of the map where at least he's got some of his teammates ahead of him. And of course, he's got a direct line of sight on the T-30. But uh, that's the two minute warning. And there's now four on both sides. So it is now looking like it might be a draw. Unless the enemy makes a push. And in doing so, they actually lose all their players. Dialing in again on that position where the TVP was last seen. He could still be there. Okay, we've got the King Tiger captured now. He's come down. So maybe they are going to push. Now, we could fire there, but I think you wouldn't do a huge amount of damage because of the splash. He's a fair bit away from the actual aim point. He's getting very close to that side, so it might be a good idea to fire at that side. Running short on time now. So he's fired the round in. He's splashed the King Tiger captured. And there's no RT on the left on the enemy team now, so he can't be counter-batteried, but he just needs to change the angle for the next shot. The TVP's been spotted. I think it's definitely going to be a draw now. There's no way that the enemy will be able to make an attack and assault in time. T-30 is getting close to the cliff edge. And now we can see the TVP. So we might be able to get a splash kill here. 
have we got enough time to load yes we have just so long as that tvp stays where he is oh he's he's shot and he's backing up he is a splash kill rounds out oh not enough and that's it the game's over it's a draw So let's have a look at the end of battle stats. Well, it's an ace tank of a Jocko 2014 in the S51. He did get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got nine in this one and he got a gauze medal for doing more damage, exceeding 10 times the hit points for his own vehicle. And his win eight for that game was 4,586, which is super unicum standard. So let's have a look at the team scores. Didn't get the highest damage in the game, that went to the T30. He picked up a high caliber for 4,694 hit points of damage, but Jocko wasn't that far behind. Uh, 3,061 for him, and after that it was the Striv S1 got 2,770. When it came to kills though, it was that Striv who got the highest number. He got four kills, whereas the T30 only got two, so did Jocko, so did the T29 and three members of the enemy team. They're King Tiger Capture got a steel wall there. TVP managed to get a Spartan. And, um, yep, those are all the medals that were awarded. When it came to base XP, it was Jocko who did the best. 697 base experience points. 693 goes to the T30. Five, uh, oh, 623 goes to the King Tiger Captured on the enemy team. And uh, I think that's mainly because he was uh, Tier 7 RT in a basically a tier 7 game or was it tier 8 game it was a tier 8 game yes yeah, sorry because there's tier 8 tanks in there and so obviously he was earning more xp with every shot let's have a look at detail 12 shots fired six direct hits 13 splash so we obviously splash more than one tank um, at a time 3061 hit points of damage all of it at more than 300 meters he damaged seven of the enemy killed two and did 241 hit points of damage assistance and 928 hit points of stun assist off 11 stuns on a premium count he earned 50,901 credits got 5,891 for courageous resistance that's for getting an epic medal in a losing or a drawing game so his total came to 56,792 and after ammunition resupply and he only used standard ammo but it is expensive ammo he actually ended up with 33,872 credits to take away now he picked up three bonds for getting the gauze medal 1,045 XP, 624 for courageous resistance, took away 1,669 altogether. So a pretty good game, even though it was a draw, he still managed to get his first ace tanker in the S51. You can tell it's the first one because it's got those scrolls underneath. And whenever you see one of those, well, that's very welcome indeed. And well done, Jocko, for getting the first ace. I remember my first ace was with my first game in the uh, s51 with the 203 millimeter howitzer and i did a huge amount of damage and in fact that video is actually on our channel so if you look it up you might may be able to find it amongst the playlist for the s51 so if you enjoyed that replay please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel and hit that notification button please uh, you'll find we'll be putting out at least four videos a day sometimes more at the weekends it depends on how many we can get done but certainly at the moment there's a huge number of games for the fifi the 105 lfh 18b2 and we're trying to get those done because it's on sale at the moment and a lot of people are having a lot of fun with it so uh, thanks very much for watching them and thank you for watching this video